you know, YouTube. It's um, Thursday, almost 6 p.m., the 14th of January, and it has been 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit today, 37 um, Celsius. Uh, a little warbling you see the birds doing is their way of coping with the heat. They've, they've had twice as much water as they normally have and um, they just do this panting thing to uh, keep cool. Um, it's just their way of managing things. I just finished cleaning out their cages because uh, they poop so much. Oh, let's have a look up here. There's one puffing away as well. Still got water. Hello, how are you? You go back over here and look. Hello. And over here. Hello. Plenty of water. Puffing away. And this seems to be their sort of normal behaviour, but it would be nice if they. Uh, and that's. Yep, yeah, just controlling themselves. What do we got down here, these two? These two seem pretty happy. And they're just about out of water. Still got some there, not much. But I'll be changing that in a moment. Let's just swing around here and I'll show you my partridge hen. Not my partridge hen, my ring neck pheasant hen. She was attacked by her male ring neck hatchmate and uh, had all the skin of the head down to the skull, but that's healed over, but the skin at the back of the head is a little bit pale. And this one here, he's the culprit. He's the one that got territorial about being bloody macho male. Anyway, she's relaxed there, more settled. She does this crouching and moving backwards thing. If anybody knows anything about pheasant, let me know. So, a little bit warm today, a bit sweaty, feeling the heat, but I keep telling myself I need to acclimatise to uh, moving up to my block, which is what I'm here to talk about, really. It's 2021. Uh, I've got another 10 months, 10 months uh, to complete the transition to my block. That's my plan. That's my broad goal. I still have to uh, build a small shed to put a composting dummy, which I have in storage up on my block. Um, and then I will... Uh, Proceed to build something that I can live in, eat in, and store food in. Um, now, both of those buildings will be harvesting water, harvesting rainwater, and I'll be doing a couple of other things in the way of uh, harvesting rainwater as well. Um, pardon my sweating, gee whiz. Um, Yeah, I'm on long service leave at the moment for the next um, three or four weeks and um, I'm just tossing up in my mind whether I will go back to work for a month and then take my rest of my leave and resign or resign whilst I'm on this long service leave. Um, doesn't really make that much difference I suppose. Um, although 
Um, the income from going back to work is about um, uh, three or four times what I would get uh, on the age pension. Mm. Which is another story and I'll talk about the 7.5% loading that I have been paying since I started work back in 1972. Um, and the government said that that was to cover the cost of pensions. Then they sort of changed the rules a bit. They uh, um, brought in superannuation and that was useful for me when I first left work um, eight years ago or thereabouts. Uh, no, ten years ago. Um, and uh, I tried to uh, see if I could stretch out my super for, for long enough, um, but I wasn't going to be eligible for, for the eighth pension for another eight years, so um, I didn't have enough super to do that. So I ended up coming, moving down here because it was close to my retirement block and uh, uh, returning to work. And that's been great because I've met some bloody amazing people, uh, created a new circle of friends down here and uh, uh, have just been acquiring everything I need to set up on the block. Uh, now, a brief overview of my block. Uh, it is 19 acres, I think, so we call it 20 acres. About three acres of it in total uh, is flat enough and gradual slope enough to be arable. Uh, and usable, uh, more than enough for someone like me to be able to maintain it. Um, and the rest is um, the rest is steep uh, hillside, mountainside. Um, my block itself is 750 metres above sea level at its highest point, and 600 metres above sea level at its lowest point. So. It drops off 150 metres over a um, uh, 450 metre uh, distance on one side and a 350 metre distance on the other side. So fairly steep slope down to the bottom of the block, which I have never been down to. But um, when I bought it, I knew that it was the ideal place for me for a number of reasons. Uh, when I do some live streams from up on the block I will explain that. Um, at the moment in storage here I have got two poly tunnels, uh, six metres by three metres, that's ten foot, ten foot by twenty foot, um, that will go up there and be covered in chicken mesh and that will provide some shelter and protection for the chooks when I get there. Um, but I can't move them up there until I have sufficient water for them. My goal is to have uh, a thousand litres minimum uh, because I need um, 3,000 litres a year for my chooks and quail. Um, but it rains on average uh, uh, two millimetres a day uh, but those days are a long way a long distance apart now I know I'm rambling so I'll try and get to the point the strength of my block is that it's on top of the mountain um, it's isolated it is uh, meant to be a hermit's retreat um, and um, a place to escape to. I've got chooks coming up to me if you can hear that noise. Um, and its uh, drawback is that it is 
um, on top of a mountain, which means that there is no standing water there. It relies on uh, the rainwater to gradually flow off and um, um, keep it going. The, the nice thing about it is at the top of the block, when I have dug into it, I have got um, 6 to 12 inches of rich black humus where the natural cycle of things over the past um, 15 years has, because it hasn't been um, had anything done to it for that long, uh, has been to um, grow uh, clover and vetch and grasses and uh, they would then die down um, and um, break down and just mulch the area. And so I've got earthworms and basically a nice organic um, bit of ground to start things on. Um, just watching the quail hobbling around here and the chooks. Um, so good soil but I, in terms of providing artificial water that is an issue. Um, and so I've got to get all that sorted um, in terms of getting up there and having a power supply. I have got two 3 kVA generators, uh, I have got a solar panel not big enough, uh, I have got some so, uh, deep cycle solar batteries uh, and I have got um, some intelligent uh, inverters that uh, accept multiple inputs. Um, that uh, so, so that, uh, for example, I don't know, can you hear those chooks getting into the feed below me? <coughs> um, anyway, um, with the inverter, if if the solar panels are 100 watts, um, and then I add in um, a thousand watts of generator power, for example then I get an 1100 watt output through the inverter um, and so it becomes additive um, and, it, and the inverter can handle up to um, 3 kVA so if it just runs solely on the generator then it will um, it will accept that as the input it will accept solar it will accept um, an auxiliary input um, and it will accept a uh, wind generator which I also have um, but it's of unknown performance because I haven't erected it yet so that's a project that I will be doing up there um, the um, uh, so that's my power side of things um, in terms of um, food storage then I've got to work out some way of setting up decent uh, insulation in uh, one of the sheds and setting up my uh, walk-in pantry for want of a better word and um, then setting up an outdoor kitchen and an indoor kitchen because it's uh, going to get too hot inside in summer and it's going to be bitterly cold, uh, potentially freezing with the potential for snow once every 10 years or so um, in midwinter. Uh, it gets fairly windy so that makes um, construction and uh, uh, design issues uh, a bit of a serious issue. but. Um, they're the things that I will be uh, working through uh, over the next 10 months up on the block. Um, down here, uh, my main priority is to get the grass cut to keep the landlord happy, um, to get some uh, garden happening for the um, shed wars activity, um, but mainly 
Um, the priority is actually for growing things for me rather than for shed wars. Um, uh, and uh, in the next few days I will be, the, the hatchling quail will be um, three weeks old later today. So that means um, um, they're ready to move in this weather out into a um, grow out cage. I've just got to reorganise things a little because uh, I need to move the partridge out of one of the grow out cages because I can only get half the birds into each cage. Um, or growing them out otherwise they'll be overcrowded um, which I could do but that's not the way I work I want to give them quality um, because I think that makes a difference to uh, the birds temperament and um, uh, if the temperament's good then the meat is good and the eggs are good anyway so that's a quick rundown on what I'm doing for the year um, in terms of the outdoor kitchen it's got to be set up so that uh, if anybody comes up to visit then we can um, just forget about any sort of work and just be social and do uh, the pizza oven thing do the um, cooking outside in summer the summertime harvest in the hot weather then I'll be uh, doing propane uh, burner for the uh, um, Presto canner for um, canning any surplus that I have and uh, uh, there'll be a few videos on that coming up but uh, that's in the 10 months ahead so stick around if that's uh, what you're interested in following um, comment below and uh, uh, ask your questions and uh, uh, let's get this journey happening um, in another video once I've actually resigned then uh, I will be free to speak about who I am and what I have been doing for the last 49 years but until I am no longer employed I am legally gagged from commenting and um, making that public knowledge. Anyway, um, let's, um, let's get on this journey and uh, stay safe everyone. So I almost forgot, like, share, subscribe. Um, the more followers I get, the more likely I am to make more frequent videos. Anyway, stay safe, everyone.